Today we are going to learn how elementary geometry is being used in modern computer vision algorithms. But before we do, let's make a small experiment. Stretch your hand all the way forward, one finger up. Now close one eye and then the other eye. You see that the finger is at different locations when you look through each eye. Now bring your finger closer all the way up to your nose and do that again. Close one eye and then the next. Now the finger moves a lot of distance when you close uh, your different eyes. So when the finger is, is close, it moves a lot from side to side. And when the finger is far away, it only moves a little. Let's call the distance between our eyes and the finger to be the depth. So between my eyes and the finger, that's the depth. And the distance between the two locations of the finger would be, we will call that disparity. And what we see is that there is an inverse relationship between the depth and the disparity. Well, the goal of what we are going to talk about today is to calculate the depth of object in images. And the context is stereo vision. This is basically why we have two eyes. So we can have two images of the world where objects appear in some disparity so that our brain could calculate the depth, the depth of the objects in front of us. So basically our goal today, which is a frequent goal in computer vision algorithms, is to intentionally and intelligently do what our brain does without a second, a second thought. And why would we even care about calculating depth? Well, for example, if you are on the road driving in an autonomous or semi-autonomous car, then you would like to know the distance to the car in front of you, or actually the computer vision system in your car that has multiple cameras would like to calculate the depth of any object that is in front of you. So our goal today is to understand depth and disparity, and now we understand the motivation. We are going to lay some foundations and then we're going to do some geometry. So in order to talk about computer vision, let's agree on a very simplified model of what is a camera. But I assure you, this model represents modern camera, cameras well enough for the purpose of this talk. In this model, we have a small pinhole through which light rays go and an inverted image of the world is imprinted on some screen at the back of the camera. Now let's make this model even simpler and place an exact copy of this screen that is in the back of the camera, but put it at the front instead. So basically what we see in this frontal screen is what we would see in the photo that is captured by the camera. So we have the object in front of the camera, maybe my finger or a car. We have the representation of the image captured by the camera, which would be the photo or maybe what I see with my eyes. And we have a dot which represents where all the light rays uh, converge. And we are going to totally abuse notation here, but for simplicity, let's call this dot today the center of the camera. And remember, we are talking about stereo vision. So we have two cameras looking at the same object. And for further simplicity, we'll assume that the cameras are exactly parallel to each other, looking exactly at the right at, at the same direction and they're placed such that the line connecting the two cameras is exactly perpendicular to the direction in which they are looking. So it would be like my eyes being exactly at the same place in my head, looking exactly forward. Um, and this would also mean that the photos that we see, the images that we see with both cameras are on the same plane. So it would be like I have two cameras taking a photo and the photo is on the same plane the same distance from the centers of the camera. And our goal today is to calculate the depth of an object which is in the common view of both cameras. And let's denote this depth with, with, the, uh, with Z. And to even further simplify things, let's assume just for a moment, we're going to remove this assumption later, but for a moment, let's assume that the object is at the exact level of the camera centers. That would mean that if my eyes are at this height and I put my finger here and my goal is to calculate the depth of the tip of my fingernail, the depth, uh, the distance between my eyes and the tip of my fingernail, then I assume that the tip of my fingernail is exactly at, this, is at, exactly at the same height 
as the center of my eyes. I would also point out that since in modern cameras we talk in pixels, what I actually mean to say is that when we look at the image uh, that the camera creates, uh, then the object that we want to calculate its depth is exactly at the center of the image. And let's think for a moment, why would the object appear at the same horizontal line in both images? Well, that's because, uh, so the two cameras, my two eyes and the object in question, we have three dots and the th uh, three points and three points together create a plane. And because the cameras are exactly perpendicular to the photos that they create, then also the photos are on the same plane. And so the object appears on the same horizontal line in both cameras. So before we continue, I want to remind you that our goal is to use disparity, the distance between uh, the, the way we see the object in both images. And so we want to use disparity to calculate depth. And remember I told you at the beginning that disparity is the distance between uh, where my finger is when I look at both eyes. Well, that's not exactly accurate. Let's put it this way. When I only open my left eye and I put my finger forward, then I see my finger a bit to my right. So if I take the line that goes from the center of my eye completely, uh, exactly perpendicular to uh, to where I'm looking. And so let's call the distance between the center of the photo to where my finger is. That would be x1. The distance between the center of the photo and the object where it appears in the photo. And same for the right camera or the right eye, that if I put my finger forward and open only my right eye, then the finger would look a little bit to the left. Uh, so we're going to talk, uh, we're going to call that distance between the center of the right image and where the object appears in the image, we're going to call that x2. And now we're going to define disparity to be x1 plus x2. What does it mean? It means that if I put, take both photos and put them exactly on top of each other, then remember if, when I look with my left eye, the object appears a bit to my right. And when I look with my right eye, the object appears a bit to my left. Then the disparity that we define is x1 plus x2 is the distance on the overlay of both uh, images. So now we understand the motivation. We laid some foundations. And we are ready to do some geometry and to understand how exactly are we going to calculate depth knowing the disparity. Um, okay, so let's recall our setting. We assume that we know x1 and x2. We have the object appearing in both images and we know the distance between the center of the image to where the object appears in both images, that's x1 and x2. And our goal is to calculate z, which is the distance between the cameras and the object in front of us. So I just cleaned up the board a little bit. You see uh, you have all the cameras and all the details and I just cleaned up the board a little bit because we're going to do some geometry. So let's stick to the important details. And also I want to call the centers of the camera C1 and C2. And remember the perpendicular lines going from the center of the camera to the plane of the image. They, are, uh, they represent the altitude or the distance between the center of the camera to the image. And because we have two cameras that we assume they're exactly the same, then this distance is also the same. It's called in the computer vision jargon, it's called focal length, and we denote it by F, which is the same in both cameras. Our last assumption of the day, and a pretty fair one to make, is that we know the distance between the cameras. And that's because either we put them there or we can use some external measurements to, uh, to understand what is the distance between the cameras. And we're going to call this distance B for base. So that's the distance between C1 and C2. And now the major trick that I'm going to make, there's only one trick today, and this is it, is that I'm going to take the uh, triangle, 
let's see if you can see my, uh, my mouse. So I took the triangle from the right image and I copied an exact, and I made an exact copy of it and copied it to the left. So this triangle is exactly as this triangle, which makes this uh, length X2. And let's denote by P, the object uh, that its depth we want to discover. P1 is the pixel in the left image uh, in which this object appears, and P2 is the pixel in which the object appears in the right image. And I'm going to totally abuse notation here and says I copied the exact triangle from the right to the left, then I'm going to call this dot P2 instead. Okay, now since the base, which is the line connecting both cameras and the horizontal line of the images, uh, the horizontal line on the image where the object appears, since this, these two lines are parallel, we have these two uh, angles which are the same. And for similar reasons, we also have these angles which are the same. And now do you see what I'm seeing? So let's look at triangle C1, C2, and P, which is marked here in red. Then this triangle is similar to P1, P2, C2. So let's look at it closer. We have, we're going from the one arc angle to the two arcs angle to the third, uh, to the third angle. And we have three, uh, we have three similar images. So the, uh, the triangles are similar. Now, since these triangles are similar, oh, the text is a bit blurry here. Okay, that's life. Um, so because these triangles are similar, there is an equivalence between the ratios of the height and the base of the triangles. So on the larger triangle, the height is Z and the base is B. And on the smaller triangle, the, the height is F and the base is X1 plus X, X2. Because these triangles are similar, the ratio is the same. So Z over B equals F over X1 plus X2. And I'm gonna remind you that we defined the disparity to be x1 plus x2. So we get z over b equals f over d. The height over the base equals the height over the base. And now I'm going to multiply by b and get the formula, the equation that gives me the exact depth when I know the disparity. So since f and b are constants, the distance between the two cameras and the distance between the center of the camera to the plane of the photo, that would be the base and the focal length, they are both constants. So what we see here is that we have an inverse relationship between the depth and the disparity, a, a linear inverse relationship even. And now we know, given the, the disparity in stereo vision, I am able to calculate the depth of all the objects in the mutual view of the cameras. But remember I told you we had one assumption that we are going to remove later? Well, now is the time to remove this assumption. So until now we were assuming that the objects that, appears in the, that appear in the image are on the same horizontal line that goes through the th center of the image. So that would be like the tip of my finger being exactly at the height of the center of my eyes. And now we're gonna allow this uh, object to be anywhere. It could be higher or lower. And it's also important to, to, to see that no matter where the object is, it will always appear on the same uh, horizontal line in both images. So we have X1 and X2 like before, which represents the distance between uh, the center of the camera to the pixel, to the horizontal pixel uh, where we see the object. And now we also have Y because maybe the object is a bit higher or lower from the center of the cameras. And it's going to be the same Y in both images because if you uh, take a triangle from both my eyes to the finger, then if the plane of the photos in, is in front of me, so no matter where the finger is, I'm going to see it in the same height in both eyes. And again, let's clean up the board a little bit. And actually, I just want to look at the left side of 
what we see in the image. So before we, as before, we have two images. We have the X1, X2, Y. We have a lot of details here. And actually, we're not going to need them. So that's a really cool part of this uh, equation proof. Uh, so we're just going to look at these lines. So we have on the left side uh, where we see the object on the left camera. And now let's look at the following thing. So F prime is the distance between the center of the camera and the horizontal line where the object appears in the image. And Z prime is the distance between the center of the image to the object in real life. So if my finger is placed a bit uh, up uh, higher than the center of my eyes, then F prime, uh, actually I have this. OK, uh, so we're going to see it like this. So we have F prime and Z prime, uh, which are the distances to the center, to the uh, to the photo and to the object, but in an angle because the object is not exactly at the same height as the cameras. And now we're going to take a projection of these lines onto the plane of the center of the image. So if we have the camera here and then the object, which is a bit higher than the center of the of where the camera is looking at. Then we have F prime, which is the distance to the image, and Z prime, which is the distance to the object. And F and Z would be the projection of those lines to the plane of where the camera is looking, like straight ahead. And now uh, we get, since it's these are projections, then Z prime over Z over F prime is equal to Z over F. Now, how is this going to help us? Because if we go back to the same calculations we did before and we take triangle equalities, then we see that Z prime over F prime equals B over D. I promise you it's exactly the same uh, calculation as before. If you are a bit unsure, you can pause the video and go back and see it's the same. But what's important for us now is that Z prime over F prime the height uh, in the larger triangle and the height uh, over the height of the smaller triangle is equal to the base B of the, of the larger triangle over the base D of the smaller triangle. Taking these two things together, we get again that the relationship between Z, F, B, and D, the depth we want to calculate, the focal length of the camera, which we know, the base, which we know, and the disparity, which we defined to be the distance between um, uh, like x1 and plus x2. And again, uh, we get the coveted formula that we wanted to show. And we see that no matter where the finger is uh, with relation to uh, the cameras or my eyes, then I always get the same formula that the depth the distance between the cameras and the object is always uh, the constant of base times focal length divided by the disparity. So that's kind of it. We know the motivation of why we care uh, about computing, uh, calculating depth in stereo vision. We learned some basic computer vision concepts and we did some elementary geometry, which showed us that if we know the disparity uh, of where the object appears in stereo vision in the image of both cameras, then we can calculate its depth. But some of you may have wondered during my talk, okay, so now I know that if I know the disparity, then I can calculate the depth. But how would I even know what is the disparity? Like I have two images showing me something. How would I even know that the finger appears exactly at this pixel in this image and exactly at this pixel at this image? Well, actually, this is a very complicated problem in computer vision. And the pro this problem of identifying common objects in stereo images is called matching. And in fact, everything we talked about today relies on the output of the matching algorithm. And how would we find those matching points, you ask? Well, maybe in my next talk. In the meanwhile, thank you for listening and keep being curious.